setting a science-based target is really the only way we know that we can ensure that we have carbon emissions reductions targets that are in line with what the science tells us. We have been working to reduce our emissions for many years and successfully so. And we have been working to develop more and more energy efficient products for decades. This is something that is the core competence for us and something that we're really good at. The biggest impact that we have along the value chain is when our products are being used by our customers. This is where we have the biggest opportunity to make an impact and the energy efficiency of our products that our customers are using the most optimal solution for the right application, but also the energy and electricity and the carbon mix of that energy or electricity used by our customers have a really, really big impact. With the new targets, we are increasing the ambition even further. We all have a role to play in order to meet these targets. It can be how we choose how we get to work in the mode of transport that we choose for commuting. It can be by what products do we develop. It can also be what kind of electricity or energy do we choose for our factories. In a number of ways we all have a role to play. These are absolute reduction targets. That means that they are not in relation to cost of sales, which is the case for our current targets. The other big difference is that we now have targets for the entire value chain. So all of the emissions that are part of our operations, our transport, our product, in use and so forth, are now part of our targets. So it's a, a much bigger scope. We enable the transition that is needed for a low carbon economy through the solutions and the technology that we develop. So for instance, our different technology can be used to enable the shift to electric vehicles, to produce wind energy, to develop uh, new energy sources, for instance. Mm -hmm.